Hey, welcome back. What's up? In this episode, we're going to talk about setting up Dependabot to automatically open pull requests when you have dependencies that are out of date. So here I have a repository on GitHub. It's private, but it doesn't really matter. Like you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So under security, like oftentimes Dependabot will create alerts for you when there's security vulnerabilities. And so you can go in here and you can click enable Dependabot alerts and that will start depend like giving you alerts when there's Dependabot issues. Um, another thing that you can do, uh, so yeah, let's actually enable um, Dependabot alerts here, and then we'll also enable security updates. Um, and then from security and analysis, I can actually, okay, so here we go. So now in the security tab, now we actually have Dependabot alerts. So right now we have several issues um, of varying severity on our GitHub repository. So we've got some issues with post CSS and WS and trim new lines and whatever. So the very first thing we can do is uh, Dependabot will sometimes open pull requests for these dependencies. So I didn't actually like, have any pull requests before. We just enabled Dependabot and it started creating pull requests for us. So now we can just go into this bump post CSS dependency. We can see which files changed and we can take a look and see if we trust this. So let's load the diff for yarn.lock. It looks like it's just upgrading from version 7035 to 36 and we can approve the changes and then we can actually like merge these changes in. So what's really cool about this is that you, um, the Pendabot will automatically start sort of making these pull requests for you. Um, it's really important to have tests. <laughs> so if you're running anything serious or real that has like production stuff going on, then you wanna, you wanna have some tests. Um, so I'm gonna go through the rest of these and merge these in. And then I wanted to talk about the next thing here shortly. All right, so I've got all of those PRs merged. I still have a couple of security uh, advisories here for Dependabot. That's okay, we're gonna go and address these shortly. So another thing that we can do though is set up Dependabot version updates, which can help us automatically keep our versions up to date. So we can say create a config file. This is gonna create a new file inside of a .github directory, and it's gonna create this Dependabot.yaml file and we can give it the package ecosystem. I think we can say Ruby gems here. Um, the directory is slash because that's where our gem file.lock lives. And we can set the schedule to daily. I think you can even set it more frequently than that, but on a daily basis, uh, GitHub will go and look for dependencies where the libraries have updated versions, not even if they have security issues, but just is there a new version of X library? And this will allow you to automatically update. So there's several different configuration options for dependency updates. You can, um, you have to give it the package ecosystem directory and the interval for which you want these updates to happen. But you can also sort of like add things to an allow list or an ignore list. Uh, you can have assignees on those pull requests so that only certain people are responsible for merging those PRs. Uh, so you can have like several different settings here. And this is, I think this is built in or like part of sort of tooling that's part of uh, GitHub Actions, but Dependabot will just start opening these PRs for you on a scheduled basis when there's new versions of the libraries and it is super handy so that you don't have to like go out and check, oh, is there a new version of Action Pack somewhere down the line or something. So I'm gonna say commit this new file. You could also create this Dependabot.yaml file directly um, locally if you wanted, as long as it's inside of the .github directory. Um, and now what's happened is Dependabot will go through and actually start checking to see if your uh, version, if there's any version updates required. So let's take a look at this again. Um, okay, so Ruby Gems, I got that wrong. So it's not Ruby Gems. So let's see, I'm just gonna search for gem here. Um, oh, bl Bundler, Bundler is the, the package ecosystem for, for Ruby Gems or for... So now I need to go back to my local copy and pull it down from github and you'll notice that there were changes to gem file gem file.lock and yarn.lock because these uh these were prs that i merged from dependabot and then this file was added that's the one that i want to take a look at here and instead of ruby gems i want to say bundler and then we'll say add that push it back up to github 
and then we can refresh this view. And now we have this new dependabot sort of uh, dependency that's set up and it's looking at our gem file. So now, now that it, now that we see this view, we know that it's configured correctly and it's actually going to look at our gem file. And here you see checking now. So it's checking to see if there's any versions that are, uh, that are new. Um, yep. So this is going to be the two files that it's taking a look at gem file and gem file.lock gem file.lock is where all of your sort of like, um, the specific versions of the gems are locked, uh, locked down when you say like gem or like bundle install. Um, and so as it's checking, sometimes we get brand new PRs that will come in for new versions of things. All right, so we have one PR that came in. So bumping Puma from 3.1 to 3.2. So when, when Dependabot found that security issue with Puma, it bumped it from like 5.2 point something all the way up to 5.3.1, but there is an even newer version. There's 5.3.2. You can even look at like the release notes from Puma and see like, oh, does any of this actually matter or... Um, you know, is this, is this important to our system or whatever, but it's also like a nice way to stay on top of dependencies going out of date. I have an application that's like a rails four or rails five app that was written in 2015. The dependencies are so far out of date that it is a nightmare to maintain. And so if I had enabled dependabot or if this existed back when I wrote that application, then likely a lot of the, the technical debt would not exist that I have right now. So this is a really powerful tool and it will help keep your dependencies up to date. So this again is going to keep our form four tracker up to date. And this form four tracker, just for those who are interested, is a tool for us to look at form four filings from the SEC and get some signal and then maybe make some trades on those forms. And so uh, we, here we have like a bunch of company data um, for 8,000 companies. And in fact, like this is sort of some ideas that it's generated recently. And what I've been doing, um, over the last few days is trading options. So I buy like a, a call option that is, you know, three or five months out on, on some of these, on some of these stocks. And some of them are up like 500%. It's pretty fun. I'm just like messing around with like it's not it's not significant amount of money, but it's fun to play with. And so this was something that we built in previous episodes. If you wanted to head back and take a look at how we went through the process of adding Tailwind and background tasks and dealing with uh, lists of things and hitting that old API and ingesting old data and processing things in batches, um, pretty fun project that we built out. And now it will stay up to date with Dependabot. So that is pretty cool. I'm excited about that. And I've got a few more that I need to go through and clean and update. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.